And Omar Villafranca joins us now from Dallas, Texas. Omar, it was so touching to hear that officer talk about what he told his three and six year old. What was that moment like when you spoke to him about that? You don't often think about the children of the police officers. You could tell both of them were a little bit guarded, too, obviously, officers talking about their family. But they both admitted, and later on in the interview, they haven't fully explained to their children what happened. Uh, you know, Officer uh, Corporal Shaw, pardon me, has two twin five-year-olds. What do you tell a five-year-old? I asked him, I said, how do you plan on explaining this? And he flat out looked at me and said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you tell a five-year-old when somebody was basically trying to kill you? Um, an interesting thing is they... If you heard in that interview, they both were shot at. Uh, and while most people's response would be, I'm ducking for cover, I'm getting out of the way, uh, military training, obviously, with Officer Abbott, he was mad. They were upset that they weren't able to return fire. And that's a whole other set of training that obviously regular people don't get. Here in Dallas, everybody is still in shock. They're not sure exactly how to process this. Uh, the funerals are happening. They're seeing the processions, and people are still getting emotional days after, and they will for weeks. I know. You just think about the open wounds, and I always think about the children, just how to explain it. I have a five- and four-year-old, and it's everywhere in our living room. We're talking about the story and how to not sanitize it, but present it to a way that's digestible for little kids because clearly they're impacted. And I want them to have respect and appreciation for these police mm -hmm. officers. In particular, Officer Abbott told you that the shooting actually reminded him of his time in Iraq. How would you describe the officer's state of mind? Are they still traumatized? Are they getting help? Uh, well, uh, through their training, obviously, they, they even said, look, we learned to comp I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up, compartmentalize everything, pardon me. Uh, and that's obviously you can see them in action. I said, are you just putting this away to deal with later? And yeah, they said, yes, we absolutely are. We, our task, they feel, is not finished. These officers who were killed are not buried yet. They're, they're not going to start dealing with themselves until these officers are buried and the family members uh, they feel are safe. So uh, with Officer uh, Abbott having training in Iraq uh, and, and being in, in the Marines for uh, almost 20 years, he, he understands how to do it. Unfortunately, he's been through things like this. Uh, but a lot of the officers, and yes, they are tough guys. They have this tough facade. But a lot of them are saying, yeah, how do you deal with this? It's so heartbreaking. Omar, you've been on the ground there in Dallas. I'm curious, how is the city recovering? How are the people there? What's the mood on the ground right now? How are they healing? I, I, I've lived in Dallas almost 10 years. And you have to drive all over the place here, of course, working on the ground. The main scene is downtown, but when you drive across to go get interviews, you'll be in a city that doesn't even border Dallas, a suburb, and you'll see people who have blue ribbons wrapped around their tree, or people who are putting blue on the antennas on their car, or just simply flying an American flag. There was a gentleman who showed up here who was carrying a, a, a bald eagle. People kind of want to show that, look, they're dealing with this, uh, it's painful, uh, and they're still in shock, as I mentioned. Uh, they can't believe it happened in Dallas, of all places, because for the people who live here, things have happened maybe in Missouri, in Minnesota, in Louisiana. But then it came here, and they're kind of scratching their heads, and they now realize you look, this is something that not only are uh, the local people having to deal with, but to officers I've been talking to, they know now that other police departments, their worst nightmare, happened to the Dallas Police Department. So how they react is how other police departments are going to react to and look for how to deal with a crisis like this. That's interesting that you're saying that they're very conscious of the image that they're putting out as an example to other law enforcement. You know, the White House has mm -hmm. always pointed to Dallas as almost this ideal city of how they've handled cops. I remember one of them actually saying they would have this thing called coffee with cops, which I thought was so cool where yes. high school students or, or younger kids or just even community members got together with the cops when it wasn't a, a serious or deadly or threatening situation, got to know them a little bit. And apparently, yep. Omar, it's, it's the community policing that they really did right. Is that correct? And that is. Um, a matter of fact, uh, you know, if I, follow, I follow Dallas police uh, on social media. I, after working locally in da Dallas for six years, I, I, you get to know some of the cops. It's a beat you have to cover. Uh, they go out and walk the neighborhoods that aren't the best. They go out and talk to the business owners who aren't in the best neighborhoods. They've had their bumps and bruises, but they realize, and especially with Chief Brown coming in, that you've got to go out and be hand-to-hand -hand with people. 
face to face and not just talk to them when it's literally the worst moment in somebody's life. Yeah. So you mentioned the coffee with cops. That is a big thing. Corporate sponsors have gotten involved. Mm -hmm. McDonald's sponsors it here in the Dallas area where they'll tell people, come over here, get a free cup of coffee, talk to the officers for concerns in the neighborhood. That is one big thing that they're doing. They're also reaching out to kids in the black and the Hispanic neighborhoods too. It, there's video, they have this little robot that is a an officer on a tricycle that's a Muppet, and it rolls up. And of course, some kids who may not know what to think when they see a person in uniform, they see this, this robot-controlled Muppet, and they'll go up and, and talk to it. It starts a dialogue with kids. They are proactive in doing this, even though they've had lumps. But what's different than other police departments is that Dallas police and every officer I've talked to down here will admit, we are not perfect, we have made mistakes, but they say that this dialogue that they're having with the community before the shooting happened, is going to help. And after the shooting, of course, you're seeing the outpouring of support. It's, it's fascinating uh, to watch the healing afterwards and, and how strong that force has been. Omar Villafranca in Dallas. Thank you, Omar, for your reporting. Thank you.